everyone and welcome to Plain Pages to another poetry video. Today we're talking about the poem Look We Have Coming to Dover by Daojit Nakra and this is another poem on the edXL A-level English Literature curriculum and before we begin today's video I just wanted to address some comments that were left on my previous videos and also in my DMs. So you guys asked for a PDF version of the notes that we do in the video of the things that I talk through so I have spent the past two days <laughs> doing just that especially because I knew that specifically for 2023 I would not have time to finish all the poetry before your exam so I wanted to help out those who have their exam right now. I have linked them down in the description box and I will also make a community post so you can find them there. Basically you can find a transcript like a complete transcript of everything I say in the video and also like some visual aids to help you remember because I know that some of us just prefer reading information like me for example so hopefully these notes will be of help to you and with that let's dive straight into the summary and analysis the poem considers immigration to the UK and how different cultures emerge in different countries. In the poem, there's a description of immigrants arriving to the UK and landing on British soil and going through a whole load of problems before they can actually be admitted. Because the host country does not want to accept them as they come illegally and legally and they try to make a better life for themselves. And the poem explores themes of society and culture, looking at the xenophobia and struggles of identity and also immigration and it explores explores this topic through British identity and well-known references and conflict as a globalized world battles with old traditions and all those things that people have previously found familiar changing. The poem could be compared to The Deliverer, Ode on a Grace and Perry Urn, and The Furthest Distances I've Traveled. The title connotes excitement about Dover, a seaport town that could get you anywhere in Europe. It's famous for its white chalk. And Dover has traditionally been the first place that immigrants land when they come to British soil. It's also It was also a special place during the war as it could be seen through the aerial view because of its white chalk beach. And it represents a lot about being British. People stood there during the war saying goodbye to their loved ones. When they arrived from Europe, this was the first place where they landed. The title is grammatically incorrect, imitating the prejudices that people have around immigrants being uneducated. The the structure of the poem is five stanzas, five lines. It's quite even. It, it looks a lot like waves coming in and out, and it also looks like cliffs reminiscent of the topic explored. There's a lot of enjambment and continuation that you can hear. The lines run over into the next, and they make the poem more fast-paced, emphasizing the whirlwind rhythm of immigrant life. There's not an idea that can be indicated in one line, and that space is not enough. Likewise, the immigrant condition cannot be embodied into one phrase. So various, so beautiful, so new. Matthew Arnold, Dover Beach. So this quote is very significant. It's by the famous Victorian poet and cultural critic called Matthew Arnold, who lived from 1822 to 1888. So this poem was written by a British poem, admiring the beauty of Dover. And hence, because he's British and a white male, it's from the insider perspective, so of course it's much more hopeful, much more positive, much more romanticized. It's admiring the idea of the beach as various, right? Like, oh, so many things found and beautiful and new. And it's on this that Nagra plays, highlighting that immigrants are also various and also beautiful and also new, but people don't seem to accept that when Matthew Arnold wrote about it, they did. but. When an immigrant writes about it, they don't. Stowed in the sea to invade the lash of fresco of a diesel breeze, ratcheting speed into the tide with brunt, gobfuls of surf plumbed by cushy come and go, tourists proud on the cruisers, lording the ministered waves. Beginning with Beginning the poem with invade cuts right to the point that many British people ironically view immigrants, especially Indian immigrants, as invaders. A reminder of British colonial history where Britain was the true invader. So this is exactly what the poet is trying to satirize here, that who's really the invader? Who's really the person you're fighting against when conservative British people say like, oh, we don't like immigrants here, when 
that's exactly what colonizers were essentially doing, but they were not only immigrating, they were taking over the land, whereas this is just someone seeking a better life. This word has a lot of negative connotations, and it's particularly used a lot in British tabloids, conservative tabloids, to talk about immigrants, and there's a direct link of hostility towards the immigrants, and they're actually stowed away and hidden. They're not really invading, so whereas an invasion is something like a colonization where people come with guns, where people come to fight and make that land theirs by any cost, this is more people fleeing and this is what Nagara is trying to express here. Rather, they're seeking shelter but people don't see them as such. For example, al fresco. So this is a word that's Italian in origin, it means out in the open, and it's usually referred to in the context of like various culture, like paintings and other Italian bits of culture, high culture especially, and here it's used in the sense that the immigrants are, are taking away the British culture somehow, they're diluting the traditional British values. They're out in the open, stowed away and hidden with the elements lashing against them and it's a very unpleasant ride where they can smell the diesel breeze, so it's not like they have a very easy journey here, rather it's a very unpleasant one and they can smell the smell the unpleasant diesel and they can almost smell the urgency in the air and ratcheting means a rapid movement of rising and a falling and likewise they're trying to make it into Britannia very quickly before someone puts a stop to this or before they're forced to come back to their native country where things were much worse for them and interestingly Nagra actually wrote this poem in 2007 when the immigrant issue was not quite so prominent in the headlines so in a way this poem not only foreshadowed but exactly predicted the words that people would continue to use against immigrants including swarms. Uh, brunt is the worst part of a specified thing and the worst part of the waves they're covered with phlegm so that's the thing that you cough up and that's how people feel about the immigrants that they're the dirt and the muck that the sea has spat up, gobfuls so mouthful of dirt and mouthful of immigrants they're spat up on the shores unwanted and the tourists are the ones who are lording over the ministered waves and lording is a very elite word it's also a very British tradition to have lords to have the nobility and so what the author is saying here sorry what the poet is saying here is that isn't it ironic that tourists when people come on these boats when they come to briefly stay and then go then everyone is very welcoming but when people want to stay for longer and contribute that's when people start having problems and it's described as cushy and comfortable almost as if the immigrants have it easy as people often say but in reality they're forced to deal with being on the same level as phlegm and there are a lot of polysemic words here and the words have many many meanings but most of them refer to how immigrants are viewed as something that the sea has spat out rather than honored guests and the irony being of course are that tourists do a lot more harm and they're the ones who are treated in a more welcome way. Seagull and show life, vexing their blarneys upon our huddled camouflage past the vast crumble of scummed cliffs, scramming on mulch as thunder and bladders, yobbish rain and wind on our escape, hutched in a bedford van. Seagulls and show life are a return to natural imagery away from the diesel breeze and boats and the man-made things and there's a sibilance here coupling the animals because the immigrants are repeatedly dehumanized and treated as animals and they're seen as some kind of inferior outsider. Ironically the birds and the fish although fish don't make noise, but the birds are free to fly around and shout and do whatever they want and nobody will say anything to them because they're birds, but whereas immigrants are treated as the, on the same level as the seagulls and somehow even worse, they have to be the ones who have to crouch down obtrusively and like unobtrusively and be hidden and also the seagulls shout all of these things at them and it sounds like a meaningless wave of noise because the immigrants do not yet understand English to a level where they can distinguish something and that's what the poem is commenting on that that's what it feels like they're like they're constantly being shouted in a language they don't understand. Blarneys is originally an Irish word it's a term that means that you have the gift of the gift of the gab essentially so you have the ability to speak well so even the seagulls have the ability to speak better than them and are valued more and again camouflage shows how immigration is taboo and hidden and the backdrop of all of this are scammed cliffs and scramming scuttling moving on mode 
couch on the dirt left over the rain. So this comment shows how the cliffs have are now slowly being washed away and eroded by attrition. And because the cliffs are very representative of British culture, that's what the poem is commenting on, that people view it as what is actually a natural change brought about by globalization. People view as a consequence of foreign influence and foreign cultures. And England is, of course, famous for its rainy weather. And so what essentially they're saying is that everything is washing away and there's all this mulch and all this dirt and it's a very slippery terrain to get a hold on. So like the immigrants are struggling to make a home for themselves. They're also struggling to move around in this very rainy England, in this completely new and foreign land where nobody is wanting to accept them. A yob is a slang term for an uncultured person, but here it's referring to the rain. So it's again, ironizing the word that people used to call immigrants by referring it to the rain and hutched. So hutch is like a cage, like an escape hatch but here of course it's something inescapable and they're not really escaping and thunder and bladders so this is wet and horrible and obscene imagery and they can't escape all of this weather and it's i think it's a pathetic fallacy very appropriate for the way that other people view these immigrants as something that the rain has sped up as dirt and there's violent and explicit imagery and it shows how easily immigrant spirits can be dampened by the attitudes of those around them and a lot of the times people hire bedford rents to move furniture but here there's people moving around showing that they're treated like a commodity thrown from one place to the next seasons or years we reap inland unclocked by the national eye we're stabbed in the back teamed for breathing sweeps of grass through the whistling asthma of parks burdened ennobled pulling sparks across pylon and pylon we collectively groups all the immigrants, unifying them and stripping them away from their identity. People view them as just another immigrant rather than a person, rather than a human being, rather than an individual. Unclocked, so unnoticed by the national eye, largely ignored by the British people, even with the passage of time, a sense of seasons or years. So they're doing all the work and nobody else wants that work and nobody appreciates that work and the government doesn't care enough to notice. And national eye is a synecdoche, it represents the public view as a whole. Few people don't notice how these immigrants are doing all the essential jobs that need doing and all of the low paid menial labor kind of jobs like cleaning and fixing poles and like grafting and things. And at the same time people are complaining that they're taking away jobs but these are jobs that people like British people who are more upper class in nature, they're not applying for. Ennobled means make someone a noble, so make someone British. In a way, they're made British through the process of hard work and hard labor. This is a comment on naturalization, how there's really nothing natural, how you can't just naturally assimilate into a culture, how you can only do this through hard work and hard labor because you're never really seen as part of that culture and always as an outsider, no matter how long you live in the host country for. Teamed for breathing, so they're kept in close contact with each other, again used to highlight the language people use, teaming with immigrants. Polling is pushing a pole against the bottom of a river to move forward. It could also be a reference to voter polls, alluding to politicians and how politicians change their minds about immigrants all the time, depending on the national mood. Um, whistling asthma of parks shows how it's a burden and the treatment is suffocating as the immigrants cannot really breathe in peace and they feel like and feel like they belong and the repetition of pylon pylon to pylon shows the low quality of life for all immigrants and how repetitive and mundane it is swarms of us grafting in the black within shot of the moon spotlight banking on the miracle of sun span its rainbow passport us to life only then can it be human to hoik ourselves barefaced for the clear so, like I said, swarms reduces the immigrants to animals, the dehumanization presents them as pests, and again, this links back to the idea of conservatives seeing immigrants as people who steal the jobs, who leech off of the host country, and grafting means inserting things, fastening, attaching things, so the manual, the menial work, the menial labor that we talked about, it's mostly done by immigrants because it's 
unofficial, you're paid in cash, it's very low paying, you don't need to be educated, and of course it's very, very dangerous. And the black were then shot of the moon. So the moon has connotations of purity and whiteness, and here is this black, so what people view as invading the traditional purity and whiteness of England, we have these black people who are a threat to national identity, they're unwanted, they reflect the darkest part of a country, they reflect the poverty that many people experience, they reflect that things are bad in the world, and they bank on the miracle of the sun because it's the only thing that keeps them warm and of course sun in England is a miracle. The sun is a symbol of daytime and fresh new opportunities and it suggests that there's a lot more that the UK has to offer than the home country of these immigrants and passport is used as a verb so the passport brings them to life because only then are they considered human when they have a passport when they're a fully British citizen and it's a very valuable process in their lives and hoik is a colloquial term for lifting or pulling abruptly so suddenly they're pulled up in status but ironically they still have to overcome all these difficulties even though they're not British uh, only with a passport can they host themselves up and be somewhat in the clear certain of a future but the clear seems ironic because although they have escaped from the old life they're still foreigners in a new place imagine my love and I our sundry others blared in the cash of our beeswax cars our crash clothes we raise our charged glasses over on parasol tables, east, babbling our lingos, flecked by the chalk of Britannia. So there's a structural change in this final stanza showing how the speaker's perspective has changed. The speaker begins to attempt to embrace both British culture and their own native culture, creating a new mix of cultures. The stanza is heavily enjammed as the speaker talks fast and has a lot to say about their vision for the future. We go from the S sounds that show siblings, the reference to the C and perhaps maybe slurs that the immigrant face, and we go into I. So we go into becoming a person, into acquiring a new identity, into becoming British dash ethnic, ethnic. Uh, ethnic category so not just being Indian but being British Indian but also that I that stands for identity is the I that stands for imagination because it's a distant and hopeful immigrant dream that only a few people can achieve sundries means various it's quite a polite word it usually references culture so now we see that we move away from uh, Punjabi English that the poet has been using throughout and a mix of like incorrect specifically like incorrectly gram grammatically incorrect uh, words and sentences to something much more much more polite much more cultured and blared of course comes from tony blair's surname the poet has made a verb out of the noun like in many other phrases uh at the time blair was quite popular other than the war in iraq and in afghanistan so in a way blair brought cash and income with the speaker hopes that they could get and parasol tables so the these tables were parasols were typically used in victorian times to protect themselves from the sun to ensure that they were very white skinned very pale and the speaker is hoping that they can sit beneath tables that are on parasol so people are no longer hiding themselves from the elements hiding themselves from the natural world and the nature of a globalized society and also people not being so obsessed with whiteness and being more diverse and inclusive of admitting immigrants. Lingos and babbling is derogatory so the languages of the east and the poet wishes just once that people could talk in their own language and not be judged so much. And going back to the title, the title was grammatically incorrect, so look we have coming to Dover, but now we have this very rich and vivid language, and it's saying that immigrants know far more than you think and what you expect, and that in their own language they're just as talented. And you only know English, but they took the effort to learn English for you when they didn't have to, because they were escaping a country that was far more far more difficult and they faced a lot more obstacles than you can imagine and the poet is trying to show the effort that it took and the speaker hopes that someday it will be accepted for them to just sit on an ideal summer day and bask in the glory of speaking their native language while being surrounded by the cliffs of dover a traditional british symbol a british symbol and feeling accepted and a part of the society so I hope I managed to carry through what the poet was trying to say and I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, leave your thoughts in the comments. Do check out my new notes selling in the shop now. So thank you so much for watching and good luck with your exams if they're this year. For anyone whose exams are next year and any subsequent years, I will see you later with more, more videos from this poetry series.